We want to determine if the infinite series converge absolutely, converge conditionally, or diverge. A series, the summation of a sub n, is absolutely convergent if the summation of the absolute value of a sub n also converges. In the series, the summation of a sub n is conditionally convergent if it is convergent, but the summation of the absolute value of a sub n diverges. So going back to our two examples, notice how the terms of this series would always be positive, and therefore if this series converges, the summation of the absolute value of a sub n will also converge, and therefore if this converges, we can say it's absolutely convergent. I think we'll use a comparison test to test for convergence or divergence. Notice how this series resembles the series where we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth, which simplifies nicely to the summation of one divided by n squared. And we should recognize this series will converge by the p-series test with p equals two. So to apply the direct comparison test, we have the summation of a sub n and the summation of b sub n such that a sub n is greater than zero and less than or equal to b sub n. And because we're trying to show convergence, if the summation of b sub n converges, then the summation of a sub n converges as long as we show that a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n. So because we know this series converges, we let this series be the summation of b sub n and this should be the summation of a sub n. And again, since this series converges, by the direct comparison test, if we can show that one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth plus seven is less than or equal to b sub n, which in this case would be one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth, or if we simplify just one divided by n squared, this would be enough information to show the series is convergent and also absolutely convergent. Let's take a look at the first few terms generated by a sub n and b sub n. When n equals one, notice how here we'd have one divided by the fourth root of one to the eighth plus seven, or one divided by the fourth root of eight. I'm gonna go ahead and show the terms of b sub n using this form for easy comparison. Notice how when n is one, we would just have one divided by the fourth root of one to the eighth, or the fourth root of one, which is just one. And because this fraction has a larger denominator, it's smaller, and therefore it is true that this is less than or equal to one. Notice when n is two, here we'd have one divided by two to the eighth, that's 64 plus seven, so we'd have the fourth root of 71, and here we'd have one divided by the fourth root of 64, which again, this fraction is less than or equal to this fraction. And notice how this fraction here is always going to have a larger denominator because of the plus seven than this fraction, and therefore this will always be true, and therefore by the direct comparison test, this series is convergent. And again, because the absolute value of this series would also be convergent, since all the terms are positive, we can say the series is absolutely convergent. So to summarize this, we'll say comparing to the summation of one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth, which equals the summation of one over n squared, which converges since one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth plus seven is less than or equal to one divided by n squared. The series is convergent, and since the summation of the absolute value of a sub n also converges, the series is absolutely convergent. Now let's take a look at this alternating series on the next slide. But before we do, notice how if we take the absolute value of a sub n here, it would be the same as this series here, which we know converges. So if this alternating series converges, 
it would also be absolutely convergent. So to apply the alternating series test, notice how the non-alternating part, again, is a sub n equals one divided by the fourth root of n to the eighth plus seven. So to apply the alternating series test, where a sub n is greater than zero, we'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, see if it equals zero, and then verify that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. So notice how this is greater than zero. The limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does equal zero. And now we'll check to make sure that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. Notice as n increases, the denominator increases, and therefore the fractions are getting smaller and smaller, and therefore a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. So by the alternating series test, this series is convergent, and since the summation of the absolute value of a sub n, which would be this series here, is also convergent, the alternating series is absolutely convergent. So let's go ahead and summarize this by the alternating series test, the series is convergent, and since the summation of the absolute value of a sub n also converges, the series is absolutely convergent. I hope you found this helpful.